crazy pixel. What's up, nerds? And welcome to another Manga Monthly for the month of uh, December. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is a strange episode for the series that started three episodes ago. I think we've done three months so far. That's crazy. Yeah. is it? We're keeping it going, but we're changing. We're evolving. All right? We're evolving. We're we yeah. decided... Screw those episodes in the beginning of the month where I talk about manga that's coming out. Forget you it. know, you know what's coming out. Yeah. You, I, if I know what's coming out, you know what's coming out. You weebs know. Yeah, you probably know more than me. Uh, in, in retrospect, my, my knowledge of manga is not vast, but I am uh, slowly learning. And it's been a good, it's been a good year for manga. Well, we're yeah. actually... We're actually going to have some uh, best of manga for the end of the year. And it's going to be our first time doing that. Ooh. So be sure to, um, to stick around for that. So now what's going to happen is uh, Spencer and I will come together in the end of the month and talk about the book club books that we typically gave you two weeks to read. Now we give you four weeks to read them. So you only have yourself to blame if you don't do it. Or you could just watch this and hang out with us. Yeah, it's all true too. It's all good. Um, last month, the books that we were reading were Mao, Volume 1. Mm -hmm. If You Could See Love, Volume 1. And uh, Mapping the, the Trash Tier Whatever, Volume 1. Um, all three, generally, okay. We're going to talk about them in, in, in length in this uh, podcast show. But first, I want to tell you what you can be reading uh, this month. So so the three titles, and I'll say it in the beginning. I was going to save it to the end, but I'll share, I'll share it in the beginning because ain't nobody going to watch this whole thing. Yeah, just, come on, guys. Let's just be clear. Okay, so, so this month, the three books, the three manga that we're going to be discussing will be Call of the Night, Volume 1, just received an anime adaptation. Well, it's coming out, but they announced it, which is really yeah. exciting. Uh, Mama Akuma, Volume 1, kind of like a shoujo uh, fantasy, uh, cute little manga. And Uncle from Another World, Volume 1. Those are the, the three painted manga monthly isekai. Yeah, we have to have at least one. Yep. At least one, maybe sometimes two, but I didn't throw a Yuri in this one. It's true. Typically, I need a I need a Yuri to uh, to cleanse my palate of all this isekai. Ah, ah, uh, uh, world. Uh. Uh. The the idea of uh, dying and coming back as something is is always exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was thinking about it, and I know it's not cool, but. I think Sword Art Online is pretty cool. That's a good, that's an interesting take. Yeah. Like I know people. I, I like the concept. Yeah. I know people don't like it. I know it has its, its issues and I know it's super popular and I generally push away what is popular and invite what is not popular. But I admit that I do enjoy Sword Art Online and all of its uh I liked the first like, 15 episodes where it was like, Oh, it's a cool MMO. And then it just became very strange. And I was like, okay, I'm out. Yeah, the the first season at least um was more like a killing game style where if you yeah. die in the game, you die in real life. It evolves from that over the course. And now it's just like a harem <laughs> fucking yeah, thing. <laughs> getting go getting though is just getting all the characters keep getting assaulted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, this is weird. Oh yeah. They love to throw those those dark moments at you. They do. Sao loves those moments. You get at it's, least one a season. Yeah, you get you get a fucked up uh, moment. Definitely. Uh, we're we're got a little, we're getting distracted here. We're getting distracted. We're, we're having a typical Spencer and Azario moment. I and thought we were recording. We're supposed to be focused. We need to be focused on the manga. So let's talk about let's talk about our first title and i'll and i'll uh let you know it is if you could see love volume one uh written by tedin mikami mikami and art by yuki nanaji 
It's a, it's a Yuri. It's a Yuri. Uh, it's about this girl named uh, Mai who can see love arrows, I guess. If somebody loves somebody else, then you, she can see like these pink arrows uh, kind of connecting the, the character. So she knows if two people love each other, but she admits that love is fickle and it's gotten her in trouble before where she's tried to set up two people that love each, love each other, but they end up not loving each other. And just how were like nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like, that's my one failure. I'm like, what? You were like nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, the age is, the age is really weird in this because they're supposed to be first years in high school, but just the the themes of love it's a little adult i mean just the understanding of it all i guess like i don't remember in elementary school anybody trying to date anybody to be honest not like realistically it was like yeah. we're dating and then you don't interact with them at all yeah yeah <laughs> and, then, and then they're like i break up with you and you're like oh, okay this but one like, it wasn't until high school that like anything close to actual like romance happened do you have middle school in Canada? No, we just have primary or elementary school and it's years, uh, it's kindergarten to grade eight. And then you go to high school. Yeah, we have middle school. So seven and eight are its own school. That's interesting. Yeah. I always uh, wanted that. That's cool. It's not fun because those are my, those are the years that I got bullied the most in. Yeah, I can picture that being a very bully-esque year. Yeah. Because, because you're just like, very low age yeah just a bunch of little assholes yeah and uh yeah those are those are the bully years that was the bully era for for Zarium. but um in this in this in this story i tried to remove myself from those from that thought you know i mean if because yeah. it's just it's just more fun to to not fo- to not focus on that um but in this sense, uh, she's she's going to a new school and it's an all girls school. And she's thinking like, oh, uh, these girls won't like each other. But but you're a in a Yuri mind. This is a yeah, yeah, this is a this is a Yuri school. And and one character is a childhood friend that she gets. She she's I guess the childhood friend has always loved her. And then the other character is a new character that she just meets and who immediately just, loves her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, love at first sight, as they like to say. And there's, there's confrontations there, but how did you, there are, there are some little arcs, but I felt like it in, the, in that sense, it didn't really care to like keep things consistent. It just did whatever it wanted to. Yeah. It felt like the first chapter established stuff. And then it was very slice of life where it yeah. was just like, Oh, here's your average day. Here's another average day. Oh, what what kind of crazy thing is going to happen? Like, I'd say near the end, it it introduced like a couple characters that I'm assuming are recurring. But overall, it was very slice of lifey, which I don't really mind, especially for something like this, where it it just works. Like, I can't picture like a a huge overarching narrative in the beginning of of this. So I didn't mind it. I thought that it was... uh, (laughs) <laughs> like i said i thought it was funny that she was like oh no one's gonna fall in love here <laughs> they have a bunch of arrows <laughs> I don't know how this works. Um, but <laughs> yeah i thought that it was a lot of fun um it <laughs> it is weird that the one girl falls for her when she falls on her in a bathroom yes. cubicle and she's like not even upset she's like oh huh <laughs> this <laughs> like, is normal okay you you think that she'd be like cinderay at least but i don't know there was one scene in particular that i thought was probably the best out of the entire uh manga and that's when my and her childhood friend um kind of confront each other and the emotions that her childhood friend was portraying on her was like wrapping her up in these arrows and it was turning toxic and i just thought that that was just building on her little power and uh and then uh, for spoilers, I guess we could spoil it. At the end, she, she they have a three-way or something like that. Is that what's going on? It, it was very weird. She was like, I like both of you as friends, maybe more, but I like both of you a lot. So let's all be together. And I was like, what is that implying? What is 
I think I think that that's like that's just this asking for jealous moments. Like, yeah, because these two girls clearly like her a lot yeah. enough to like um, follow her around and crap. But um, evidently she can't she doesn't know if she loves anybody. So that's yeah, I guess that's, she can't see her own arrows. I, I liked the ending because it left me wanting more. And I, I think that's all you can really uh, ask for. Yeah, for sure. In a in a manga like this, um, so let's see. So let's see what the readers, yeah. viewers have to say. Uh, Sob and Fire says interesting concept with the love arrows. The art is super cute. The ending of Volume One was a bit of a cliffhanger, so I could see this series potentially getting a lot more interesting. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if I'll keep reading to find out. Depends on whether I'm in the mood for more Yuri. Um, I like that you went up close for that. <laughs> yeah, Sob and Fire has the has the the right idea. The art is super cute. All the yeah, characters, they're, they're they're stupid little fucking dresses. Everything is just cute. Subtle fan service. There's the bath scene and stuff like that. Uh, of nothing, course, there's bath scenes. Of course, no, nothing nothing too much though. It doesn't go into like the 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 titty grabbing or anything like yeah. that. They didn't like overdo it. It was it was very subtle. It was, it was nice. It didn't have me rolling my eyes. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Of course. I wasn't trying to quickly turn the page so no one saw. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was uh, slowly analyzing. I wasn't each, reading each... it on the train going. Each panel, yeah. uh, giving, giving a nice read through. Um, Arvinus says, I really like the art style and how they used color to highlight the arrows and people's eyes. The arrows of love concept was unique. And I liked how different kinds of love and different arrows are different kinds of love had different arrows. Yeah. 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 Totally. That was a cool idea. It was interesting that even though the MC could see love, it seems like she knew less about love and relationships than other people. I enjoyed my time with it and plan to continue. Best girl was the one with the hair in the shape of animal ears. And uh, I agree. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of the animal ears. Um, but yeah, it was, I guess that that's true because the, each arrow was kind of different depending on yeah. the character. So that, that's, that's a good to point. That's really good to point out. And they were colored. Everything else was more manga style and then everything. i like that kind of style where like it was black and white but there'd be like pink arrows it was very yeah. distinct yeah a few only only a few manga do stuff like that and i don't know it really stands out when it's yeah. when it's tied into the story so overall i i i think uh i think it's an it's an okay read it was an okay read yeah so it, kind of, it, it made me want to read volume two if but, it's uh, your genre already then you'll enjoy it yes so moving on we have a mapping the trash tier skill that got me into a top tier party volume one written by Udon Kamono and uh, art by Savin. Uh, I believe this is a light novel made into a manga. So keep that in mind that there, there is a light novel version of this. Um, the story centers around this guy named note who uh, went who, in the beginning, he gets his, he gets his power, but his power is a three slot ability and you only have three slots, but his three slot yeah. ability is mapping and nobody likes mapping. So it's the worst ability ever, but it is a rare ability, I guess. Um, but he's, he kind of gets kicked out of his, his party, but then uh, uh, one of the most powerful parties in the world ends up enlisting him to map out the dungeons, which it was yeah. a guess on their part and ended up working. So, I'll just say from the beginning, I really liked it. Ma it made me reread the beginning, but I really liked how he had this, uh, this character. I think her name was like Mia or something like that. Yeah. Had, like, something like that. a cute girl friend character. <laughs> they got their, they got their stuff together. They got their abilities together. And you thought that, that yeah, I, I, w I had assumed that these two would just work together and be good adventures. Yeah. But, no matter what, because she got really powerful skills and it, but it turns out that she just fucking leaves them and she's like, yeah. no, it's not going to work. And I thought that that was such a good opening uh, act to, to uh, a fantasy story like this. It made me want to know what happened between them. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was like, she's like, Oh, it doesn't matter what you have. We'll adventure together. And then it's like her crying. And she's like, we have to go our separate ways. Yeah. Like they don't explain it in volume one. So I was like, Whoa, what happened? That's yeah. intriguing. Yeah. I, I just, I, <clears throat> that, that pacing kept me interested. It kept me reading in the first chapter because at first I was like, oh, this is kind of stupid. Um, there, there's comedic elements to it. Um, but this is this was a manga that could definitely go into the fan service realm where it's purely fan service. Yeah. And it wasn't. Yeah. It was it was pretty straight laced. Yeah. Uh there there are some they they kept the comedy in the writing to where there's this guy named Force who likes to sexually harass girls, I guess. And he's the reason yeah, but you why you ever like hear about it. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like the reason one of the characters or one of the characters left the party before Note got there, which is really funny. Just a really fun like I heard about what happened to the to the previous uh party member. He sexually yeah. harassed her till she left. And I was like, it's pretty like, funny. Oh, I have kind of mixed feelings about being recruited now. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Just, just that that was even in there, and uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of, I, I don't know, the pacing of this is, was just really well laid out. They didn't yeah. speed. They did. They, they sped up some stuff to where like he was training for three months, and they, ex, they kind of explained the world and how it works and how skills work is still a little confusing how he can learn skills or learn. Yeah. Like, is he in a game? Is, is this the world? Yeah. Is it, yeah. Do you gain level? Like he's, he's learning like trap finding traps and stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. But how, how do levels work? How does he actually get stronger? Um, yeah. They don't really establish the systems or the framework. There's one character in the party named Jin who I liked a lot but they didn't it was cool they didn't really um have much screen time outside of the first meeting with him and that's why i I, that's what kind of makes me want to read more too is because i want to know more about him because he's kind of a he's kind of a mystery he's really cool yeah he he has like all the cool stuff going for him where he's like he looks cool he's interesting and his ability they're like oh it's not typically combat ability but he made it one yeah you're like oh okay yeah, he was he was one of the more interesting characters that didn't get a lot of the spotlight, but I think that I think they did that on purpose. Keep yeah. keep keep a mystery. It feels like yeah. he'll be more important later. And then there's a little dwarf girl. Uh, she was okay. She didn't really yeah, serve any right. purpose. Like healer. She was, she, he used her to train by carrying yeah. her around. She's uh, a healer. There was a like a Sundere like yeah. girl. It wasn't overwhelming Sundari though. Yeah, she wasn't like smacking him or like like she was like, Oh, here's here's a dagger that you really wanted. Yeah, she's like, she, wow. And she's like, but it's not like a big deal. So okay. I think I think her way of teaching somebody or motivating people is a lot the way I do it, where I kind of put them down and hopefully they like <laughs> the classic Azario. Yeah, I'll put you down and I'm wanting you to improve to to uh to show me up, to prove me wrong, you know? Uh it doesn't work with everyone, but it doesn't. It oh, there's there's some people and some ex-girlfriends. <laughs> that, oh my. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that would agree with you, Spencer. <laughs> um yeah, I I usually do that where I'm like I'm like, come on, like, you're so good at this. Why aren't you doing any type of thing? Uh, it's, it's like, uh, you're taking advantage. You're taking advantage. Cause he was being lazy and yeah. she called like, him I out. I still have five months. Yeah. She called him out on it. And he was like, fuck, like, okay, I need, I do. So I liked that. I liked the way that she called him out on it. Yeah, me too. And then there's force who is the uh, sexual harasser guy. And this kind of leaves us on the cliffhanger where they they this they discover that yes note can read dungeons and they're training to um to get him into the dungeon because they're trying to get below the fifth floor or something like that which hasn't been explored yet and uh he can map everything within the area um and so but at the end of this force uh quits and that's that's how that's that's Pretty much last the page. Mysterious lady. Yeah, mysterious pretty lady. That everyone recognizes. 
Yeah, they even know the name of her. It's just yeah. like I've heard this name before. So that's that's where we leave off going into volume two. And it, it had me wanting to read more. I, I yeah. actually I actually really liked it. It was me too. It uh it wasn't it was just a fantasy. I wouldn't say it's an it's guy or anything like that. No. Kind of like kind of like um is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon where it's just the world? It's just like a video game world. Yeah, it feels like that's just like the world that they live in. It's not yeah, like logging out or anything. Yeah, there are some rules that I think need to be explained, but mm-hmm. established that it's not a game. So what do you think? Do you think this is a good one? I liked it a lot. I thought it was really interesting. Um, like you said, it, it didn't become an Izakai or like a huge fan service fest. It kind of stuck with its main idea that was pretty interesting. And it established why mapping is useful. Uh, so I was never like, oh, it doesn't really make sense why, why they keep them around. So yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, Sob and Fire, who mm-hmm. says, uh, not much to say about this one. As a former MMORPG junkie, I always appreciate manga exploring RPG party dynamics. I feel like I finished volume one super quick, so maybe I might try volume two to see where it leads. And I agree, the the pacing yeah. is super fast. Like it you is. get you, I got through this one really quickly too. Um, Me too. I think I think after the first ten, when when that whole like kind of twist opening uh, caught me off guard. I did reread it. Cause I was like, where did this girl go? Oh, you know, yeah. like, so I did reread the opening just to kind of catch those nuances, but, um, yeah, but yeah, that was, a uh, it was a good one. I was glad to have read this one actually. Um, with, uh, with Mal volume one, why don't you take this one away? Uh, sure. Answer. So Mal it's, uh, by Rumiko Takahashi. Um, the person who made Inuyasha and, she made this new series where it's about a girl who lost her parents in an accident uh, that was kind of weird. It was like a sudden sinkhole and she finds herself uh, suddenly in another world, which is like, uh, I don't know the era, but like a hundred, a hundred and a bit years ago, Japan, but there's demons uh, and there's, she meets someone named Mao who is able to fight the demons alongside his assistant and he's a doctor. He has he's got mystical abilities. His blood burns demons, that kind of thing. And she starts to learn that she might have powers too. So she has to figure out what's going on because it seems like this is the past. So maybe it can predict what's going to happen. Um, but it, it, time moves differently in both worlds. So she's trying to juggle living in both worlds. So yeah, it's it's very interesting. I think. What did you think about the part that you read? Um, I thought the opening was kind of messy uh mm-hmm. where they're explaining like oh she died um and i i was just hard to follow at first but yeah. i really liked the art and i know it, it's a little dated like it looks like it looks like but i really liked the illustrations i like it a lot but it's the kind of art where it's weird to see a cell phone because you're like oh this is recent yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. i i i agree it's uh I, I just now correct me if I'm wrong, but the first couple um, illustrations, they were more detailed than it, it seems like it gets less detailed as the, the volume goes it on. Feel that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I imagine that um, with Inuyasha in her past, um, there's, there's less of a sense to really pay attention to backgrounds and, mm. This one doesn't really have a lot of them, but I feel like more modern manga uh, pays a lot more attention to the environments. But it, yeah. it, this is not something that she the art's really charming, but it's very basic. Yeah, it's very like simple. Um, it's like straight uh, average width lines, um, not a ton of detail. So like it works, but it does make you be like, oh, I wish there was like a little more. Yeah. I that's well from what I was saying, the character designs I liked, but I just wish that I I had more place in the panels. I I knew where they were. I knew how they were moving. Yeah. But um. But it does make you want to read it through. Read the read the second volume because you're not really left with anything to 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 be like. Oh, this is really good, or this is really bad. Yeah, so it kind of like intrigues you to be like, where does this go? 
Yeah. Well, you just, you just put an hour and a half, an hour into reading it and you don't want to feel like all your time was yeah. wasted. <laughs> like you wanted to, you wanted to either be like, oh, this is a really bad uh, story, but, um, but and you I reviewed, reviewed yeah, yeah, you reviewed, I reviewed it. both volumes. And in the second volume, the art gets a bit better. Like there's more heavy lines for demons and stuff and it gets a bit more interesting. So if you kind of like it and you're not sure, I would say try volume two. Okay. Uh, we have a comment from Sobin Fire who says, this one has a very distinctive art. I'm not the biggest fan of the style, but I appreciate the vi- variety in this month's selections. Going to go with the meh on this title. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arvinus says the art style was very old timey. The story just wasn't that interesting. I wish they had spent more time setting up the world and getting to know the characters as it was I really didn't care about them. I don't plan to continue the series. And again, yeah, that's, that's fair. It's it, there's really nothing to to go off of in this first volume. It's it's kind of like uh, I don't know. I always I always think of like first chapters and first volumes as the uh, writer or author, um, like a pilot episode. You yeah. know, um, they just put they just put whatever out there and see if an editor or a publisher will, will jump on it. Um, so hopefully this, this series does get better. Um, yeah. Viz is, Viz is going to, Viz is going to continue to publish it regardless, probably. Yeah. Um, it's got very big names. So yeah. Um, but those are the three titles. We did it. Yeah. What'd you guys, what, what'd you guys think of this episode? Yeah. This new style. You got four weeks to read the other stuff. True uh, efficiency. Uh, Call of the Night Volume 1, Mama Akuma Volume 1, and Uncle from Another World Volume 1. There they are again. There they That's, are. We just talked about the book club stuff. Maybe now that we're doing one episode, we can figure out the live episode where we yeah. can do these live. I would I would love to do these That'd live. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, you can see, uh, you can put, it, put, it, put us on the spot. Yeah, you can throw weird questions at us and we'll go, um, yeah. okay. <laughs> all right all right how weird how weird how weird was that question um thank you so much for watching and uh we'll we'll see you we'll see you next month see you next month <laughs>